Hey everybody, um, gonna do a baseball card video. So um, I have been on a Sam, well, I, I started collecting Sam Jethro uh, a couple years ago um, when I learned of his story. I actually, you know, I think my uh, interest in the Negro Leagues, um, I've always had the interest. I've, I've known of players like Josh Gibson, um, Buck O'Neill, um, but I didn't know a lot about it. And I think in the last couple years, shortly before, um, it's that, uh, MLB announced that, um, they were going to start counting, uh, Negro League records as being official MLB rec records. Um, I started looking into the Negro Leagues and, um, and I, and I think it's kind of like an untapped story of baseball history that's super interesting um and um there's a player in that story sam jethro who um very uh i think is a very very cool story um i don't know his whole bio by heart but um it is interesting he was a uh, um uh, I think similar to like Satchel Paige, his age wasn't clear at the time of his playing days, but um, he is the oldest ever rookie of the year. Um, and he is the second ever rookie of the year. Um, I believe second ever, right? Does that make sense? Um, so he would, so, um, well, something like that. We know the first uh, rookie of the year was Jackie Robinson. And then um, Sam Jethro was, I think, 32 years old when he was rookie of the year. Um, and, uh, he was known throughout his Negro League days as having, uh, as, as being, well, super, super fast. He was Sam, Sam, the, Sammy the Jet, I think they called him, Sam the, or Sam the Jet. Um, and I'll show some other cards here. Um, and, um, he, along with Jackie Robinson, I think uh, the Boston Red Sox were pressured to, um, uh, look at some Negro League players and uh, Sam Jethro and Jackie Robinson um, tried out, I think, or did a exhibition or whatever you might call it for the Boston Red Sox. Um, and I don't think the Boston Red Sox had any plans of actually taking that seriously. Um, and I think Jackie Robinson was, was, was very irritated. Um, and I think, uh, Sam Jethro's expectations were lower. Um, but he was, he, he was, you know, among the notable Negro League players of that day. Uh, of course, you know, players like Josh Gibson were historic, you know, historically great, um, players, but he was super significant. Um, so I wa wanted to show his card. Um, and then, uh, I figured I would show some cards that I have never shown before. Um, I would say that there's some cards that I bought with the intention of selling at a later date. Um, most cards I buy aren't explicitly with that intention. But um, here's an example of one of those. Uh, Roger Clemens, PSA 10, uh, Tiffany, 1987. So this is, this is like a, um, you know, um, announce Hall of Fame on eBay next day type of thing. I think that's a little opportunistic of me. Um, but, um, that is why I bought this card. It, it, there's very, you, buy, the vast majority of cards I'm buying are because I, I just love the cards. Um, and then I have some other cards <laughs> This is that, that, that I kind of misguided. I, I bought not really knowing what I was doing, um, uh, early on, um, the bunch of Barry Bonds cards. I thought that these would be great ideas. But this, this is my best one, and it's a PSA 9. There's, you know, tons of them. So uh, not, not, not a great value. This is a PSA 8. And then here is, this is even dumber in the early days of my buying cards, um, this BCG 10, which they have their own ranking system where um, their 10, they only go from 5 to 10. They don't, I actually don't have this anymore. This was, this was a, a, like the lower end Beckett uh, grading system. Um, and 10 really was nine and 10 of conventional ratings. 
five would have been one and two and so on. Each grade is like two grades. Um, so it's, it's not super, not, not, uh, not super uh, reputable, even though it's Beckett. I mean, it's reputable, it's reputable. I shouldn't say it's reputable. It's, it's not a great investment, uh, these things. But anyway, um, remember these guys, these guys, you know, these guys do, you know, bring up some nostalgia for me. Um, and then um, a card that I was really excited to get, um, not, not, not to be an investment card, um, is is this guy so here this is a uh uh greg maddox psa not not uh, sorry beckett nine but um when i got it i actually was not that happy with it because the edges are a little rough here on this side here um so it's not it's not great um anyway this video is a little all over the place um I guess I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll start closing it down. Um, these cards, um, these uh, the Ben Baller die cut die cuts from two th from twenty twenty, um, and I saw a lot in twenty twenty during COVID and lockdown. I watched a lot of card break videos, and I was kind of taken by it when people opened the Chrome Ben Baller, which is pretty high end how rare uh, the die cuts seem to be popping up. And when you look at the pop report, um, that seems to, that seems to, um, uh, to, to play, to play to that. Um, so um, I still kind of think that die cut cards, well, I mean, if, if these are, I think they're cool. Um, and if they're ever going to be anything, I think they're, you know, fairly, scarce for modern cards um you know i think there's you know maybe i'm sure there's hundreds of them great actually i don't actually i don't know i don't know i haven't checked recently um but anyway uh put that up there and i think i'll close it with that this guy and uh ben baller die cuts i've been thinking of getting a Luis robert they're like on sale right now psa 9 it's like 50 bucks pretty pretty scarce card anyway thanks for watching